One of the greatest blessings of membership in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the privilege of paying tithes. Tithing is an ancient divine law. To those who pay tithing, the Lord promises that He will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's in Malachi 3.10. These blessings may be temporal or spiritual, but they will come to those who obey His divine law. The Lord commanded us to give a tenth of our increase, which is understood to mean income, that we may be blessed. The law of tithing gives us the opportunity to help build up His kingdom. Those who do not pay tithing rob God. They keep for themselves something that rightfully belongs to God. Having been a Mormon once upon a time, I know that you teach paying tithing as a requirement for baptism. That's right. Obeying the law of tithing is one of several commandments we teach people that is essential for being worthy for baptism. Sounds like membership fees to me. That's not what the Bible teaches concerning baptism. Paying tithing has never been a stipulation for receiving baptism. I think we should explore what tithing really is from a biblical perspective and see whether it plays a role in the life of a believer today or not. That sounds like a good starting point. It's a fact that in Old Testament times, people tithed. Tithing was an ancient law practiced by Abraham when he paid tithes to Melchizedek. Okay, let's start with that story found in Genesis 14. It tells the account of Abraham rescuing his nephew Lot from the armies who kidnapped him. Upon his return from victory with the booty from the conquered kings, Abraham meets with the mysterious high priest Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blessed him. Then Abraham paid a tenth to Melchizedek as tithing. Well, let's take a closer look into this account. In Hebrews 7.4, it says Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything he had taken as a spoil of war. The tenth or tithes was a portion of what Abraham had obtained from his invasion, not a portion of everything he owned as personal possessions. There is no scriptural evidence that this tenth giving was a normal part of Abraham's life. It was a one-time event. He paid 10% of the spoils. What about the other 90%? The Bible doesn't tell us what happened to it. It seems it went either to the king of Sodom or back to the people who were originally plundered. So yes, Abraham's gift to Melchizedek is an example for believers to follow. But it's not an example of how we must give a tithe. Instead, it is an example how to give freely from the heart. Then you don't believe that Abraham was required to pay a tenth to the high priest? Abraham was free to give anything he wanted, and he decided to give a tenth. The fact that he paid a tithe to Melchizedek does not mean that Christians ought to do the same. We too are free to decide as God moves us. What about Jacob and Genesis, where he vowed to pay a tenth to the Lord? But that doesn't mean Christians must do the same. Jacob promised to give God a tenth of all he had if God would be with him, provide for him, and watch over him. We don't make bargains with God. We are to give without conditions. What about the tithe that was required of the law of Moses, wherein the children of Israel paid 10% of everything they earned, grew, or raised to the tabernacle and the temple? The tithe in that case was a tenth of what the people of the other 11 tribes produced that was set aside for the support of the tribe of Levi, which was given no territory and which was responsible for the religious life of the nation. As a matter of fact, it required multiple tithes from the children of Israel. One for the Levites, one for the use of the temple and the great feasts, and one for the poor of the land. These demands would have actually pushed the total to more than 23%. I mention this to point out that, as LDS members, you are not even close to paying the tithes ancient Israel was commanded to pay by law. I'm pretty sure tithing was taught in the New Testament. Tithing in terms of being an obligation upon believers is nowhere in the New Testament. The word is only found a few times, once in Matthew and in Luke and four times in Hebrews. One of the references, Matthew, is Jesus telling the scribes and Pharisees that they were hypocrites for the way they paid tithes. A second reference in Luke was made by a Pharisee in a parable, in the midst of professing how good he was because he tithed. The four verses in Hebrews reference the fact that tithes were paid to the Levitical priests, not to teach that tithes ought to be paid now. Nothing in the New Testament instructs a believer to embrace tithing. If it was so important, Christ's apostles would have surely written something about it. Certainly, the New Testament talks about the importance of free will giving. Believers are to give as they are led and as they are able. 
Paul teaches that cheerful giving is a form of worship and done from the heart, not by compulsion. Did you know it takes us over 30 hours to produce one five-minute video? We need your help. Please consider supporting us financially. Even one or five dollars a month will help us greatly. Check out the Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching Talking to Mormons.